We're here to talk about the 10 ways to capture the attention of new leads for your dental practice. Now, why is this particularly so important to understand here? Well, there are five challenges of owning a business, any type of business, even a dental business, but it happens to be all the businesses, and here are the challenges. One of the challenges is getting a competitive edge or advantage over your competitor. This is particularly important when you have a industry that's very crowded. And to be honest with you, the dental industry is very, very crowded. You can easily find this out by opening up your yellow pages and seeing all the dental ads that are in there, the large ones and the small ones. You can also um, notice this by just driving around your local area. Now, my local area here, I've seen at least five dental offices on one block on the same street. As is crazy. I, I'm surprised how well the dental practices do, and they've been there for years. So you can find a lot of dentists, probably, I would say a good 10 and 20, sometimes maybe in the same square mile radius. It's very competitive. So see, how do you get that edge? How does someone become aware of your practice and say, wow, that one's better than that one? The other challenge is to have a clear marketing funnel. A lot of times, I see people advertising, and it's just be a brand, it's basically just a branding advertising, which is nothing wrong with just having branding and advertising, but what are you going to do when you get that person and say, okay, I know about your business? Then what? Sometimes businesses and dental offices don't have a very clear marketing funnel. Just have a very clear marketing funnel. You want to capture their awareness. You want to gain their interest. You want to make a desire for your product or service. And then you want them to take action and, and, and call you and say, serve me now. Here's my money. And then you want them to be completely satisfied. Now, what I just went through is a, is a marketing funnel strategy um, called ATIS. It's a formula or a blueprint to a clear marketing funnel. So what you do in your marketing funnel is you gotta somehow come up with ways for each of those uh, services called ATIS. So awareness, interest, desire, action, satisfaction. Those five steps. You gotta have a clear marketing funnel there. Now the third one here is people have a lack of what I would call a clear good marketing plan. Some businesses only have a real marketing plan. My plan is yellow pages. It is they just do there's no plan written down on paper. It's very important to have a plan. That, you know, everyone's probably heard the saying, failure to plan is it means you're going to fail to succeed. Everyone should have a marketing plan. And, and it should be a detailed marketing plan. It shouldn't just be, oh, uh, yeah, we're going to market to XYZ. You know, it needs to be detailed. It should actually incorporate your clear marketing from that plan. Okay, It should detail who your target market is, who your type of customer that you want. I mean, everyone says, I want anybody in the area. Do you really want everybody in the area? Do you want people that can't pay you what you're worth? You don't want everybody in your area. Do you want, you know, you want a certain type of people that you can bond with, connect with, and have relationship with. Trust me, you can, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with competition. The good thing about competition is that you can serve different clientels, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to be clear what type of people, what type of services you want to provide and who you want to provide it for. Um, it could be as simple as you maybe don't want, yeah, you live in a your big city. Maybe you don't want everybody in the entire city. Maybe you want everybody that's in the square mile of you. That's fine. You just got to be clear on that. It should be in your marketing plan. Um, the other one is finding new customers. Well, yeah, finding new customers is very hard and very challenging for most business owners. Marketing is not nothing you do once and all of a sudden everybody comes to you. You can't just put your name out there on a billboard or in a TV ad or somewhere once and believe once you do it, you get two or three customers from there. Everyone's going to find you. No, it's not going to happen that way. Finding new customers is truly a job. It is eight hours a day work. It is work to find new customers. All right, you can do things that to automate that process, which I do particularly. I automate the process, but it is work. All right, and you, you cannot stop it. You cannot stop looking for new customers because you got to keep bringing in new customers. Because to be honest with you, you will lose some customers. And that goes into my next one. The fifth one is retaining customers. Customer retention is key. A lot of times, people get a customer, and once they get them. They don't do anything to keep them. You think just because your service is good, you think that your service is good, that they're going to stay forever. But no, it's not going to happen. Sometimes customers will leave, even though your, your service is really great, because they have to move out of town. They get a new job and re relocate them. Sometimes you just can't help but lose new customers, which is why you need to find new customers to replace those customers that leave just for natural reasons. All right? Now, what you want to do, though, you want to make sure when those customers leave, let's say those customers are moving, maybe they're moving, you know, 20 miles, 25 miles out of the area. You can still retain those customers. Sometimes customers will use that excuse to remove 25 to find new dentists because they weren't quietly satisfied with you, all right? But if you would do something that that will retain them, you know, that will make them stay with you, say, man, this guy is so great. I'm willing to drive an additional 25 miles because really, when people come get a tooth cleaning, it's, it's twice a year, just some 25 miles twice a year. That's not really a big sacrifice, all right? But they'll be willing to do that if you're a great 
great, great dinners, and you provide a great, great, great service. Okay, so what today I'm really, really going to focus on today here is the competitive edge. Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick fact. Now, based upon a panel study by Entrepreneur Dynamics, 40% of businesses, business owners do not think that their business has a competitive advantage. Wow. So out of out of ten businesses, six of those feel that they have a competitive advantage, four of them don't. That's that's pretty that's a lot. That's almost half. I have a question here for you guys. What do successful businesses do to get a competitive advantage? I'm gonna give you a few minutes to see what kind of, what kind of answers we get in here, but I'm gonna give you a multiple choice. Alright? You get a chance of multiple choice. Put in the chat room right here, lower prices, superior quality. Or superior service. All right, let's look at the first one here. Lower prices, okay? Most people think, oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like a Walmart. I'm gonna slash prices. I'm gonna be the cheapest, cheapest dentist in the area. I'll be so inexpensive. Let's let's be careful with that, okay? You gotta be careful when you, when you want to be the guy and the lowest guy on the block. It could lead to negative cash flow. There is a reason why you have to price your price certainly if you want to make a certain amount of profit. I mean, you are in a business, make money. Don't get that wrong. You want to help people. But you do need to survive. How you gonna eat? Just remember this: you're working every day to serve other people so they can provide them with their needs. But you still need your needs to be met. In order for you to get those other needs to be met, you need to use you need to have money for those other needs. Plain and simple. So you want to make sure you price yourself, receive a profit, and you won't end up in a negative cash flow. You want to have enough profit for expansion, for emergencies, you know, for rainy day fund. You gotta have these things. So you don't necessarily want to say lower prices, okay, as your competitive advantage, because really. It might work for a couple weeks or a couple months or maybe even a year, but eventually you're gonna feel the you're gonna feel the, the money pinch. <laughs> you're like, man, you're not making any money, and you can't offer any of your staff people raises, whatnot, whatever, because you just got at the lower prices. So you have to be careful with that. Now, if you have a way of leveraging, you know, and um, and you're the only guy in your town that's a dentist, and you got over, you know, a hundred thousand people, then you know, or maybe it's two dentists, you got over hundred thousand people. Maybe do lower price because you're gonna get most of those people to come to you. Right, but you got to be very careful with saying lower price as your only means of competitive advantage. A lot of times when on, on uh, stores or product stores or like Walmart and those, those things, Sam's Clubs, they can do lower prices because they have leverage, they have resources where they can get the goods at a cheaper rate. You're a service company. You have your fee. You really can't get too many services. You, you, unless you're going to hire people um, and give them very low wages, um, you're not really going to be able to do that. So. Um, unless you have some kind of technology that allows you to provide lower prices, but you have to just make sure don't use lower prices as your competitive advantage. Very be careful with that. All right, let's look at the next one: superior quality. Who doesn't claim superior quality? Would you go to a dentist if they said that we have bad quality? The teeth will still look yellow when we leave. No, I mean you expect superior quality when you go to any type of dentist. You expect quality when you go to most majority, 99.9% .9 of businesses. You know. You expect it. I mean, only way you might not, even if you want something to throw away, you expect that thing to last for that full amount of time it's supposed to last. You expect quality, all right? You expect your teeth to be clean, to be healthy, you know, when you go to that dentist, all right? So you expect those things. So saying that I have better quality than another dentist, uh, don't all dentists have quality? You expect it. So you can say it, but people don't really think that's really a competitive advantage, all right? So superior service is what I found the truly successful businesses, even outside of us, dentists, offer that make them stand out. Providing a superior service to creative solutions to address their customer needs up front before a monetary transaction. Let's just look at that real fast. What does that mean? Let's go back to the market for no advantage here. So if you have some kind of uh, advertisement out there, right, and it says, when people, let's just go, let's just use a yellow page, for example. If you put an ad in your pages, you probably got your name. You, if you got a full page ad, you probably got your name, some pictures of your dentist, some picture of what your you know your staff looks like, and a probably little slogan. Okay, so okay, that's what your dentist is. All right, cool. And you got a phone number and address from the client. All right, but let's say you got ten other people that same full page ad. You know, same looks exactly the same. The only thing different is the faces and the telephone number, slogan, and the, and the um, business address. What's gonna make you stand out? So here's what makes them stand out. So if it's not in that yellow page ad, what if you said to get a free guide on how to choose the right dentist, call this number or con or send an email or visit this website and you can download a free guide on what you need to do, what questions you need to ask to make sure that you get a good dentist for your needs. All right? Wouldn't that stand out? Think about it. You got 10 people 
all got full page edges, yellow page is happy, they're getting paid big money. But what makes you stand out is that you're offering something that they're not offering, and you're offering about any monetary transaction. Wow. So this guy is willing to give me this free guide on how to pick a dentist. Let me think about this guy, right? And that's doing it for free. I'm going to take all these questions and, and read them and then call three or four different dentists, including the one that gave me this guide, and I'm going to ask these questions. And they're not going to answer. I might go with someone else, potentially, but I would bet as soon as the majority of people will still come to you because you gave them that free guide. That makes you stand out. That's a superior service. But let me also tell you this. The part of superior service is to follow up. It's part of your marketing funnel is always to follow up. I don't want you to be like you're a nagger because you don't want to be nagging or, or you know, always bugging them. But here's some statistics that you need to know. 40% of business owners follow up with a prospect or customer. Only 48% never follow up. So that means almost half never follow up. So if you're a guy that follows up with the prospect, you're more likely to get that prospect because they almost never follow up. So let me just give you some statistics here. The report statistics show only 2% of sales are made on a first contact. Going back to the other pages again, you got your ad, your full page ad, whatever it might be. You can give them a free prospect consumer's guide. All right. That's your first contact. The first contact they see, that's your first contact. 2% is going to be, even if you don't have a guy, 2% of the sales are already made on that first contact. So if 100 people look at your ad, only two people may call you. Now, how often you can get 100 people look at your ad in one day, in one week? I don't know. I mean, yellow pages are mad statistics. But just think about it. 2% of the sales are made on the first contact. That's if someone looks at your ad, so boom, I like that ad, call you. Boom. All right, man, I'm coming in. All right, 2%. Now, 3% are made on the second contact. So you got whopping one more percent. So that means now you got contact. If you want three percent, you got contact someone twice. It means you gotta follow up with them. You gotta follow up. You got a way to follow up, which is why you have the consumers in the way. See, it's to a purpose. Now, five percent on the third contact. Well, just because I got I gave my consumer guy and I follow up with them. <clears throat> hey, how you like that consumer guy? Some of the hundred people are not really gonna buy from. So you gotta wait to third percent. So after the third try, maybe get five percent of those hundred that will actually use your service. Right around here. Now, fourth one is 10%. So, of the 100 that you gain into your little marketing firm with the free consumer guy and you capture their contact information, 10% of those 100 people now, 10 people of those 100 on the fourth contact after contacting four times, meaning by phone, by email, or other means, something in the mail, 10 of those 100 will use your service now. Now, here's a kick an amazing 80% on a fifth to 12th contact. So, on number five contact, you could potentially have 80% of your, of your, um, your prospects that came into your marketing phone, all right? But it might make up take up the 12 contacts to do that. Now, you're probably thinking, how do I sit there and contact people if I got to hire someone special to do it? Man, maybe you do. You got to hire somebody, your, you know, your dental assistant, your front desk personnel will call these people or send out flyers or information, you know? At least they got to contact them 12 times. You should not stop to the 12th time. Don't stop before 12th, you know, if you haven't sold them. Don't stop. You say, man, that's a lot of work. I got them to do other things. They got to do billing, got to do this and this. I'm a, I'm a three-staff spot, including my hygienist. They, I got one person in front of the front desk, I got myself, and I got two hygienists. I can't afford, I, how am I going to do all this? Well, that's where I come to play, because I automate these things for you. All right? And so you can concentrate on the things that you need to focus on. But that's the mindset you got to have. Successful businesses do these things. Let's think about it. You go to, if you want to look at anything expensive, you want to look at, you know, some furniture, bed, or you want to sit down in bed and look at some beds, right? Okay, you see, okay, I like it. I'm going to go look some more stores. She knows those stores. But what sounds on that first store got your information and follow up with you every time and they kept on telling you what services they have and what they can provide for you and what they can give you for free, buzz a buzz a boom, and what advantages you have and, and give you more information about that bed that you like so much and, and tell you about that and then the only ones that do it and the other ones don't do it. Who are you gonna who are you gonna do? It's an age old saying the squeaky wheel gets the attention. They're squeaky, very cool about their squeakiness and they're helpful when they squeak to you. So they're gonna get your attention. You're gonna get I mean, they're gonna get your attention, right? And you're more likely gonna buy from them. Because you also establish a relationship with them, and you got you kind of learn to trust them because they're giving this information, and then you don't want to buy from them. So that's why this is important, okay? So let's back up here and let's focus in on who am I? My name is Claude Bailey. I'm a online market consultant. I help dentists automate capturing, connecting, and closing new dental patients on the internet, even if they are not technical at all. And I recently become a Amazon bestseller of my new book, Dental Marketing: 20 Things Every Dentist Should Know About Dental Marketing. All right, I've been doing this business now since February 2009. Officially, I've been doing this some a little bit before that, back in early 2008. I'm helping out a couple of friends. And I realized once I did this and helped them, that I started giving them clientele. I started giving them exposure. I started giving people calling them, newspaper, newspapers call them, putting them in front page ads, into their, you know, call them and want to do a, a, a featured article on them. 
and giving more content through PR. So I realized once I did this, man, this is pretty powerful. I do this for my friends, and I love doing this. I truly enjoy doing it. I could probably help anybody. I love helping people. And I love helping dentists. I remember talking to one dentist consultant. Gave them a couple hours worth of consulting uh, information, and they went off and did it. And they got a little more red presence. And got more. So I truly enjoy doing this, but this is who I am. All right. So I've been doing it since 2009 officially, and I enjoy doing it. And I'm glad to hear, be here today live to help you. And hopefully through this, you understand the 10 ways you need to do to capture leads, to get their attention, to capture new leads for your dental practice. So that's enough about me. Let's talk about you now. Here are the 10 ways to capture the attention of new prospects. All right. Now, I broke it down into five categories. The five categories are provide information that solves a problem now. Provide a product that solves a problem now. Contests and challenges, community ratings and reviews. All right. So let's look at provide information that solves a problem now. Now, remember going back to our Yellow Pages example and going back to our marketing funnel, you know, formula, the five step formula, blueprint. Atus, awareness, 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 awareness. You want to make, you want to grab the attention. You want to make a consumer, a prospect aware of you, all right? If they're looking at the yellow page, they're looking online. Now, most businesses now, most consumers start with the internet, especially looking for a service like a dentist, all right? Because they're looking for a, a service of a dentist that's close to them, okay? Close to them. And on your phone, on your smartphone, you can pull out and you can have a map of where businesses are located around your home area or your office area or wherever you work or wherever you want to be. Let's solve a problem now. If anyone's searching for dentists, what problem do they have? The problem that they have is that they are truly, 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 truly need to find a dentist. That's the problem. They don't know what dentist to pick. They need to find a dentist. They need a dentist for whatever needs, but they need to find a dentist to pick a dentist. Now, if someone said bad breath, that's true. They have bad breath. So here's something you can do. If you think someone is searching for a dentist because they have bad breath, Let's give them some information, all right? What type of information are we going to give them? First off, as I stated in the beginning here, give them some kind of consumer guide about how to solve bad breath that you think you're looking for. Boom, I'm looking for bad breath. I'm looking for dentists to help me solve a problem. I got bad breath. Boom, hello, they just caught my attention. How do they know? Or, you know, um, I, in my personal opinion, someone's online searching for a dentist. They're looking for how to pick a good dentist. That's the problem they have. How do they know which one to pick? So many of them. How do they know which one to pick? It's not only they just have one dentist out there. You got hundreds of dentists in your area. So how do I pick the one, the good one out of the hundred? All right. So all I can do is consumer. What I have created is a dental care consumer's guide. All right. It tells you what you need to do inside a report on ways and what you need to look for in finding a good dentist. Well, the well, some other tips like bad breath. All right. So. You're giving us information. You're giving us information for free. Boom, you got their attention because you give them, you're solving a problem. The problem now is they don't know which dentist to pick. Tell me how to find a dentist to pick. Two, I got bad breath and tell me what I need to do to prevent bad breath. You solve their problems immediately now without monetary transaction. You provide a superior service. Boom. What else can you do? Well, a lot of times people, you got real good content. People nowadays don't want to really have time to read. So what you can do is you can make that content audible. You can have them download an audio file on a podcast and they can listen to it on driving their way to work on their iPhone or their Android, wherever podcast uh, station they use. Boom, you solve a problem now. They can listen to it, boom, no monetary transaction. You got their attention. Three, you can provide a short little 10 page sheet. I mean, not 10 page, but 10 tip point sheet. Oh, 10 questions you should ask a dentist and what answer you should be looking for, right? Or 10 things you need to do to prevent bad breath, right? Or five things or three things, whatever it is. It could be eight and a half by 11 sheet that they can download for free. Nice color infographic. This is what I call an infographic. Nice colorful infographic that you can use, right? That will show them, you know, that will solve their problem. Boom. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Awesome. What else can you do? Hey, you can turn all this content into a video series, right? It could be online or offline. But if you do it online, which would be part of this problem here, you can be online. You can say, hey, here's what you need to do to find a dentist, or here's what you need to do to, to prevent bad breath. Download my video series on preventing bad breath. The three steps, or the five steps, or the ten steps, whatever it is, or one step, or the two step, you know, thing you need to do to prevent, you know, um, bad breath. Do a video series. It could be you talking, and boom. They download it online, get the information for free, and boom, all right? Another thing you can do is, uh, 
you know, you can provide them with what I can call recipes or, or another infographic or, or, or that sort, uh, a recipe list. Give them some healthy information. Hey, you know what? I got bad breath, man. So instead of saying, you know, here's some things to prevent you from having bad breath during lunch, right? Bad breath. I got to eat or breakfast. So in this case, maybe tooth decay or maybe to a healthy tooth, right? So you can give them another, here's another example of infographic. Say, what to pack for a tooth healthy lunch? And look at this. Look at this recipe or this, 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 this infographic. And this is information. This type of sandwich. Turkey is good. Apples are good. Oranges are good. You know, not oranges, but carrots are good. Uh, yogurt is good. Water definitely good, right? Things you can pack. Now, this is from Delta Dinner, if I don't like. Wow, that's information that's worthwhile and grabs my attention. Okay? You can provide this information. Information like this truly helps grab your attention and you can do it monetary for free. Once you set up once, it's automatic. Okay? So let's look at something else. Let's look at providing products. When people are looking for dentists, they might be looking for uh, the problem I have is what toothbrush I need to use too as well. What if you were to send them a, a, a toothbrush, some toothpaste, and some dental floss as a gift? Say, hey, I know you have a lot, but I know one of the problems is because everyone goes out and they search for the guy buy a new toothbrush once every 30 days. So why don't you go out? Um, here's what kind of toothbrush you should need. And if you want to try these toothbrushes, here, we will send one to you for free. How much is a toothbrush? A couple bucks. I mean, you can get toothbrushes, you know, I mean, they range from a dollar fifty pound get the Kroger brand to you know whatever Oral B whatever version maybe four bucks they're under five bucks under you know a lot of them mostly be under three bucks you do a toothbrush and you put a little toothpaste in there the kind of toothpaste little seven pack you know small thing to do floss now here's a kicker now <clears throat> this also can be used good for retaining your current customers now a lot of times you go to dentist once you have them you give them a toothbrush to take right but remember. They got. They have to replace their toothbrush. So they're only been use that one toothbrush for for 30 days. They're supposed to replace it now. If you're going to be a good dentist, you want to make sure that your consumer has all the information, tools, and equipment that he needs to make sure that he keeps keeps good, clean teeth. Don't you want them to make sure they change their toothbrush after 30 days? Um, what's the better way? And now that you get someone a toothbrush, once they leave, why don't you give them a toothbrush every 30 days? Right? They pick one up from you when they come in and make the dental practice. But in between, in between dental cleanings, you send them a toothbrush every 30 days. Health insurance companies say you're supposed to get the teeth cleaned twice a year, once every six months. So send them a toothbrush. Cost you, what, a couple bucks? Send a toothbrush in the mail? That goes a long way. Now, why wait to after the customer? Why wait to after the prospect is a customer? I say give them a toothbrush up front. That goes a long way with your branding or your name on there. With the oh, okay, All right? There's people out there trying to figure out what toothbrush. You go to, this, just like there's a bunch of dentists, when you go to the grocery store or wherever you're going to buy a toothbrush, there's a bunch of toothbrushes in there. Which one do you pick? Soft, medium, hard, oral B, you know, what kind of contour is best? Let's make it simple for us. Solve my problem now. Send me a toothbrush. I don't have to worry about going to the, to the grocery store and buying a toothbrush because I have one coming from my dentist. And I have a dentist that sent me one early, so why not go to them? So send a product of that nature. That's, so that's number six. So let's see in the next category. Contest or challenge? I like this one. These are fun. All right. Here's an example of Listerine doing a 21-day challenge. Health, cleaning, dental cleaning. Good, good, uh, uh, good healthy gums, good healthy teeth, whatever it may be. Do a 21-day challenge. Hey, join a 20-day challenge, um, and and you'll get a join a 20-day challenge, and by doing so for free. You can join it, and then if you complete the challenge, do everything we say in the challenge, then hey, you'll get something else, a reward for it. All right? Wow, that captures some attention. Okay? Challenges are good. People like challenges. Well, complete a 10 one day challenge, and you'll get a free meal to such as a restaurant. All right? Whatever it may be. Just challenges. People like competition. People like to engage in competition. People like to like challenges that they get a big reward for. They know they have bad breath. They want to have clean, bad breath in 10 days, 5 days, 3 days. Have them join the challenge. Do it. Send them out a couple of products to go with that challenge, and bam. Now you have their attention, and now they're going to be they're mostly your customer for free. But in 21 days, they'll be coming into you and say, hey, keep, me, keep up my service. All right? Here's another good one I like using to get, grab the attention of new prospects. Think about your community. All right? Housewoman gifts. Someone buys a new home in your area or rents a new apartment in your area. Wouldn't it be a lot? People don't do it nowadays, but, you know, 
People don't give housewarming gifts too much anymore. Wouldn't it be nice if you, at dental practice, gave a housewarming gift to a new resident that just moved into a new house in your area, in your target market area, house or apartment? Think about it. Would that be nice? Wow, that grandma, who's this from? Dennis so and such, such. Dennis ABC. Wow, then ABC gives us this nice gift. It don't gotta be toothbrushes and toothpaste and dental floss. You can still add that in there, obviously. But it can be some simple things like some food, some you know, some crackers, some things that promote healthy teeth. Alright? And he said, Well, how am I gonna figure out which one which where people were moved into? Well, it's pretty simple. How you find new residents that are moving into new homes? Drive around your area. Look for for sale signs. Contact the realtor. Say I'm Dennis S. Dental. I'm Dennis such and such. I own a dental practice that's close by in the neighborhood. I like to partner with you. If you sell this home and a new resident moves in, I like to give them a housewarming gift. Is that okay? It's free, no charge. Okay, you can you can deliver it to them. The only thing I ask is that I'll be the brand on it and put my dental name on there and a couple things about me and leave my and leave my dentist card in the gift housewarming gift. Who wouldn't do that? The realtor looks good because they're giving a housewarming gift from a partner they already partnered with in the dentist office. They already trust that realtor, more likely, okay, because they sold the house. You're already building that trust factor there. That's how you do it. Now, if you don't want to call around and ask realtors, you know, you can do uh, escrow, uh, escrow accounts. You know, you can find mortgage companies that are leasing or new banks that are, you know, signing up new mortgages for Home owners, you can do it that way. Uh -oh. um, the other things you can do as well is you can go to uh, your apartment complex. Hey, when you rent out a new apartment complex, we like to provide a a gift basket, housewarming gift for that your new tenant. Can we do so? And this is what the gift basket looks like, and this is what we're going to put in it. And you all need to, all we ask is that you call us and let us know when a new tenant's coming in, and we want to provide this gift basket. You can say it's from us. You, you can partner from us. I'll take on the charge to put and get a gift basket, or maybe if you want to split it with them, that's fine as well too. Um, and I was going to put some information there because we're we're local in the community and we just want to welcome them into the community. Doesn't that go a long way? Especially put that housewarming gift basket as well. Don't you grab their attention? They ain't no other business giving them a housewarming gift, but you are. Everyone needs a dentist, all right? There's another thought. Now a lot of times people will choose a dentist based upon close to their home. Or close to their work, all right. That's where you spend most of your time. So, don't leave out the companies that are there. That are there. Do the same thing. Approach the companies, especially large corporations. Approach them. Say, hey, when you get a new hire, we like to provide a gift basket. Can we do that? Go to HR department, find out. We want. We'll take care of it. Um, if you don't want to do it here at work, um, um, can you just let us know and we can mail it to them. Whatever it may be, you know. But do that. That goes a long way. If I get a gift basket from a dentist, I'm definitely going to look at them and call them. I want to drive by, look at the area, look at them, you know, and especially give me some healthy tips. I'm saying, well, these guys might know what they're doing. Gift baskets, you, you spend them more than maybe 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Think about it. Now you're going to say, well, I got to put a whole gift basket together? Think about these things. Now I want you to think like an investor. You're in a business, you need to think like an investor. It's not about how what the cost is up to you up front. It's about the return on the investment. If you could spend two dollars on a toothbrush and get that client who's worth to you, whose value might be worth to you, say even for one dental cleaning, is worth to you 120 bucks. Think about the return on the investment. Okay, I always say the rule of thumb for a marketing return on investment should be 300 percent ROI of three. That's what you're looking for. 300 percent return on investment. If you're spending Ten dollars, and you get forty bucks in return. That's two hundred percent return on your investment. Okay, think about it. Those simple things can go a long way, and they're very inexpensive. All right, now, so let's give you some housewarming gift. Those are awesome things. Um, being involved in the community, you know, you can also combine this too. Right, think about it. You can also say contests. A challenge. You can go local. Sometimes the community, city governments have local uh, fairs or whatnot. You can be at those fairs and you can offer your challenge there. You know, so be creative. Provide creative solutions to solve a problem without a monetary transaction. Give them a gift basket. Solves a problem. New new resident. 
a new employee in the area. Um, housewoman gift solves problem. Sometimes they need some things, you know. Think about. It. All right, let's come on to the next one. Ratings and reviews. Ratings and reviews has become, has always been very good. The problem with the yellow page, and why yellow page might be not being used as often, is because there's two things. Basically, you cannot determine how well of a service that that consumer, that that service is providing. You can have a nice fancy advertisement, big old full page ad, but when you look at it, I don't know they're a good company. But I've got hundreds of companies in this dental, as well pages that provide dental service in my area. How do I know is this because this one's got full page ads, they're a good company? Because they spend more money, does that actually mean that they're a better company? That's the problem with yellow pages. Right? Which is why they do use yellow page ads. Use my tip that I gave you before. You know, grab their attention, give them something, provide a service that solves a problem now. Right? So what's become more popular is online searching. Because with online searching, especially local searching, you, a consumer of that business, can go online and leave a review and a rating for that business. So you look here in this top picture. You see these stars here right, under Arbor Dental. Right? You see these star ratings. So it says 4.9 out of 5 star rating. Okay, And it has 59 Google reviews. Wow, that grabs my attention. Again, no, no, Ann Arbor Smile Dental Group has 4.7 rating out of 20 Google reviews. Uh, Gentle Dental has 4.4 star rating out of 5 Google reviews. Okay, so Google Plus uh, local is a way that businesses that Google will list businesses in their local areas. So when people go on a smartphone or go on the internet, they type in Dennis in, a, in that area. So in this particular case, Dennis Ann Arbor. Now type that in, and Google will list the local dentists in Ann Arbor. Right, and they'll put them on a map, also known as Google Maps. And then next to those maps, you can see the ratings and reviews. So if you click on the ratings and reviews, you can see what people were saying. Now I'll give you a prime example of a non-dental example. Um, for Mother's Day, I had to find some flowers. My my mom, my parents live out of a different state than I live in. I live in Ohio, and uh, I had to provide some flowers. And I want to get some flowers for my mom for Mother's Day. And I'm not. I wasn't going to use you no know, FTD services, you know, whatever. I believe in buying from a local florist, get a little bit of better price, and then have them deliver the flowers. So I want to find a flower in my parents' local area. So I go online and look. Now I will say I had there was some ratings and reviews from some floor spots. The first one had some ratings and reviews. Didn't have a lot, but it had some. I looked at the reviews. They were all negative. They were very good. They t and they were old. They were like two years old. So I was like, well, I don't know about this company. So I went to the, the next one that had some reviews. They were bad too. Well. And the third one, the third listed company here did not have any reviews at all. Did I? Um, I said, well, they don't have no reviews. So I went to the fourth rated company that had like two reviews. I went to them and looked at them. And guess what? The two reviews that they had were so positive or extremely positive reviews that I went with them. I chose them over the top three. I chose the fourth one because they had great positive reviews and ratings. And the people who left those reviews and ratings left outstanding reviews. It says, I'd be a fool for not at least trying them. Right? I was still a little nervous, but I did it. And what I did, I ordered those flowers, and they ordered the flowers on time. My mom was happy. And they lasted to up to a week and a half after they were delivered. My mom didn't even water them. So I was superb. So will I go back to them again? And guess what they did? They captured my information. Now I get weekly emails from them talking about, hey, what about this type of event to buy flowers for? All right. So that's just a way that ratings and reviews are very positive, okay? And you really need them. And if you're not online, if you're not playing your presence online, then you need to do so. Now, what even would have set it off even more if that one company that I chose for the floral shop if they would have like a live video of, of a consumer who gave a testimonial or a review online, that is number, it's the 10th one here, a video review. Someone leaves a review by video, okay? You can grab those, you can put it on your website. That's the thing about the internet. You can add all this information on your website to grab their attention, okay? It's sky's the limit, man. 
yellow pages are dying because there's only two things you can do. Put an ad in there, give you contact information, and have them contact you. But with the video, you can put everything they need to know about you right there, and it's a lot cheaper cost than what you pay for a full page ad. So those are the 10 ways that you can capture the attention of new prospects. So let's let's go back in reverse. Video testimonials, live video reviews, okay? Uh, make sure you get ratings and reviews of your customers. All right, community, gift basket, welcome home baskets, you know, key. Send a gift basket to new residents, home residents, rental residents, and new employees, all right? Contests and challenges, provide a contest and challenge. You can do it online, you can go to a, you know, a local event in there in your city or whatever and provide a, a challenge, right? Provide a product, sell a product now. People need to buy two purchases once a month. That's 12 two purchases they need out of an entire year. So you can probably get provided two purchases up front two times out of the year. Send them a toothbrush. They're going to get your name. Brand it. Put your dental products on there. Put your telephone number on there. Brand it. You can brand it all you want. They want to do a toothbrush. Send it to them. They're going to use it. They're going to use it. Trust me. They're saving two bucks. You think they're saving them two, three dollars. Why go buy a two, three dollars? They have special needs, right? But do it. Solve a problem now. Information products. Consumer's guide. How to prevent bad breath. Hey, how to pick a dentist. Download this. Download the same consumer guide on the on the podcast or from iTunes podcast or your Android, whatever. Download it. Let's do it in the car. Here's an infographic. Ten tips you need to know to keep to ten tips to know to find a great dentist or ten tips you need to know how to prevent bad breath. All right. Ten tips you need to know to prevent root canals. All right. Here's a video series on what you need to do to keep your teeth clean and fresh. All right. And here's some recipes to give you and here's an information guide of you know how to. Have a good healthy lunch, right? All right. So those are the ten ways to capture, connect, and um, new digital project, new digital prospects. Sorry. Now, what do we do from here? All right. What do we do next? All right. So I gave you the ten ways to capture. I told you why. Now, what do you need to do from this point on? You need to take some action. Now, I want to give one thing. I want you to do is take action. I want you to get a copy of the ten ways to capture the attention of new leads infographic. All right. Just like I told you before, I'm going to give you the infographic so it's easy for you to remember the 10 ways to capture the attention of new leads. Secondly, I want you to get a copy of this presentation. I want you to get a copy of the notes and this presentation. You can do so. It will be available for you. And I'll also give you a copy of this mind map that I have here. That's going to be a copy of some of my side notes. All right. And then I'm also going to give you a transcription of this live event. All right. So I want you to get those three things. Those things are very important. Here's how you can get those three things. You can do... One of four things. You can text the keyword, plug your smartphone right now, text the keyword 10 ways to capture to 5885. I'll follow up and ask you a few couple questions on um, your first name and email address so I can send you this information. The second way, you can dial, pick up your phone, call me at 586 439 0657 and leave your first name and email address. The third way, you can just go to dentalmarketingevent.com and fill in the form. And then the second way is you can just text me your name, email address to 586-439-0657. All right, now when you do that, not only are you going to get the three things I told you in the beginning here, a copy of uh, the infographic of the 10 ways, of the 10 ways to connect, capture and connect, grab the attention of new dental prospects. Not only will you get a copy of my presentation and notes, and not only will you get a, um, a transcript of it, but I'm also going to give you something else. I'm going to give you three other bonuses when you do so. Those three bonuses are one, I'm going to give you a copy a template that you can use as a free dental care consumer's guide. All right, you can go in there, you can change your name, change the title, um, it'll be a copy of that. I'm gonna give that to you, all right, for free. Also, what you're gonna get is a copy of my number one bestseller, Dental Marketing, on Amazon. Um, it retails for roughly nine dollars right now. The physical copy. I'm gonna mail you the physical copy. All right, you're not gonna just download the ebook. You can also I'll give you that as well, but I'm also gonna mail you the physical copy to you directly from Amazon. Um, basically about you know twelve dollar value, but cost about nine shipping and handling, but twelve about twelve dollar value. I'm gonna mail it to you for free. I want you to have it. And then the third thing is that I wanna give you a free report on your reputation management and web presence. What this does for you is says it will list out all the ratings and reviews you have about your business online. I'll list those out for you and provide it to you. Tell me how well you're positioned on the internet to capture new dental patients. All right. And then I'll provide that report to you for free. Okay. And give you a score of that nature. This is an example here what I did for one for a landscape company. 
Um, I didn't want you to know it's a company, but um, here's why I did freelance can come in. I'll do the same for you for for your business. All right. Tell me where you are, how well positioned you are in the internet to capture new leads in your area, and it will tell me what people are saying about you online, what reviews are listing about you online, and then I'll provide that to you for free. Okay. So those are three bonuses that you will receive. Let's recap. I went through the full ten ways how you can capture, connect, and close new dental patients by giving them something that's going to capture their attention of new leads. Now, make sure you get this copy of three things I promised you, as well as the bonuses that I promised you. And remember, you can do so by going, touching the keyword 10 ways to capture 258 5 5 excuse me, or you can dial 586-429-0657 and leave your first name and email address or visit digitalmarketevent.com or just text me your name and email address to 586-439-0657. And I'll leave this up for you guys. I'll also put this down underneath in the description tab so you can capture it that way as well. So this is a book that I will be sending you, the free digital marketing book. Um, $9 value. A lot of impactful, good information, things you need to know about marketing, online marketing, online. Um, so I will send this to you uh, in, the, in the mail to you when you sign up. All right, so what questions do we have? Any questions? Okay, here's a question from uh, Tom. In your opinion, which ones and which ways are best? How do you set up a consumer's guide online? All right, good question. All right, Tom, how do you set up a consumer guide online? Well, it's very simple. First, you need to have a website or what we call a landing page or whatnot. And from that landing page, what you would do is say, hey, um, here's your, you do a quick little video uh, with you, with your, um, with your information guide that you want to do away. You say, hey, thanks for visiting such and such and such. We have this free information consumer's guide that will help you find a dentist in your local area. All you need to do to download for free is to provide me with your first name and email address, and you will automatically be able to download it. And that's it. And it's a quick, simple landing page. Very clean, simple to do. Um, so that's how you do it. Any special web? Co uh, good question. Any special uh, uh, coding needs to be done to do that? How do you capture the names of forms? All right, that's it's very good. So um, a lot of times, if you have a website already, your webmaster will know exactly how to do that. They can put a form on there, and um, it does it automatically. Uh, if you don't have a webmaster, um, let me know when when you when you download the goodies and stuff like that. Uh, let me know. Um, you'll be able to reply back to an email, and you can send me a question, and I can work you through how to do that. Um, I actually do that too. I do create landing pages for for consumers. Um, so you don't have a web page right now, and you want to get that going. Um, let me know when you contact me for this for your free stuff and uh, your, and your bonuses, and I will make sure you get that. I'll get some information out to you for that. All right, good question. All right, so why did uh, good question here? Why did you mention earlier that you should be looking for a return on investment of 300%? Um, how do you how do you calculate that? All right, good question. How do you calculate return on market investment? Well, it's very simple, and I will say I did have put that the full calculation in this book, Into Market 20 Things to Know About Into Marketing. I put the full calculation in this book, and how do you determine um, your lifetime customer value as well? Um, it's in this book. So simply, what you need to do is how much is how much you're spending um, in marketing divided by, divided by how much you're getting back in return. And that's really a simple formula. Um, but I put it in detail in the book, which you will get for free. So make sure you provide me with your content information, and I'll send it out to you right away. Uh, what other question we have here? Okay. You mentioned the term uh, ATIS. What does that stand for again? Uh, good question. So here, I'll put it in the... Um, I'll put it in the chat room so you can you can see it. Awareness, interest, desire, action, and then satisfaction. So those three things: awareness, interest, desire, action, and satisfaction. So make people aware of your business. Once you get their way, craft their attention. These ten ways I gave you to uh, to capture new leads. That was going to provide, create some interest in you, right? 
And then it's going to hopefully, when you follow up with them through the automated process of following up with them once they give you the contact information, and you'll see an example of how I'm going to follow up with you when you provide me with the information for um, these bonuses and these items that I'm giving you. And then you'll see how that will create the desire, and then I will create some action for them to take um, to buy your service. And then you complete it with keeping them satisfied. All right. So once again, that also is in here. The formula is also in here. I'll show you real fast. It's also in here. I put it right here in the book. So it's a complete formula and explains it in detail how it works and how it functions. So make sure you get it. All right, good question. Okay, one other thing here. Okay, you mentioned that no one's using um, Yellow Pages. A lot of people are using their phone for, or, or on a mobile phones or in the internet. Right. <clears throat> so how how do you know if your website is a mobile compatible? Oh, very good question. All right. So a mobile friendly website is this. Technically by technical terms, a mobile friendly website is something that you can see full length and you don't have to zoom in or scroll around to see the site. Um, obviously if you can operate the site by using your thumb or finger so you don't have to like zoom in or zoom out, just zoom in to, to hit the link, then there's a mobile friendly website. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example of this as well in the book as well. What is a mobile friendly website? So, but good question. Very good question. Thanks. All right. We'll take one more question here. What do we have? All right. We'll take it from Lucia. I'll be hoping I said your name right. Okay. And your question is How do you make sure? How do you follow up with customers? You mentioned that you can do it automatically. All right, so automated follow-ups is what we call autoresponders. Okay, so um, you got to have a service provider, usually typically that, that can do this. Some of your hosting companies sometimes can do autoresponders for your website, um, but usually a lot of times they're very simple autoresponders. So they download a form, you say you say, give them one response back. All right, now. There's many ways, there's multiple ways of where you can actually follow up with people. Um, one of the ways that I promote follow up with people, as you see, when I actually I gave you four ways to capture the information of the copy of my presentation, um, the bonuses of my free book, consumers guide, blah blah blah, and all so forth. So I gave you four ways to get this information, right? So I gave a way by texting, two two different ways of text, so texting a short code. Sometimes it's easier for people. You can text in a long, you know, long way and provide me the email and first name. You can call me and leave information. And, and then the fourth way I gave you can go to a website. So how I can follow up with you? I can follow up with you in most of the same ways. So if you provide me with a, with a text, I can follow up with you by text. Okay. If you follow me by phone, I can follow up with you by phone as well. Um, and you provide your email information, I can follow up with you by email. I, I provide you with the links and everything download by email. Right? And then lastly, I ask you if you want the book, I need to get your address, your physical address, so I can mail you the book. So by mailing you the book, I now have your information, your email address, so I can follow up with you that way. So for, I use what I'm preaching, and um, by all means, by all privacy, um, Information to provide me will not be used by any other third party. It will only be used by me for sole purposes of providing me the information and telling you a little bit more about my, my practice and my services. Um, and at any point, you can always opt out at any time. I will no longer send you any information. All right. So that's how I felt. So what I use, you know, is a is a system. I have an automated system to do these things. But um, there's there's auto there's email auto responders out there like Aweber, um, Mailchimp. Um, you know those type of things uh, that um, you can use, and some of them you can start off for free. Some of them a little cost, and you start with free and you set it up that way. All right. So that's how you follow up with people. So, so everyone, I uh, really want great. We appreciate your time. We're coming up on the hour, so I want to close out this this live webinar. Uh, feel free to make sure that you uh, uh, stay tuned in the next uh, few days. This webinar will be. Uh, able to be viewed by you again on this digital marketing channel, 24/7 online marketing. It will be live, and then you'll be able to view it to open public. You can review it and go through it again. Um, for <clears throat> the information, again, once again, for the information I provided, if you want to capture um, and get the free copies of the consumer guide, 
a copy of my digital marketing book, um, the live transcript, copy of my mind map presentation, and uh, the other goodies I promise you. Uh, just look below in the description tab, and I'll provide the four ways that you can provide the information and, uh, and, and get that information again. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, gratefully, hopefully, I uh, thank you all for being here, and I hopefully you all enjoyed this live event and that you will come back next week, next Saturday at 8.30 for the next live event. Uh, once again, thank you, and I uh, appreciate your time.